Number 44. Which of the period two homonuclear diatomic molecules are predicted to be paramagnetic? Okay, so there's a lot here because we're discussing all of period two. So the first thing is, if we look on the periodic table, we just have to identify which elements are in period two. So from period two, from left to right, we have, drum roll please, lithium, beryllium, uh, who's next? Boron, try to do this from memory. <laughs> Boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. So yeah, there's eight of these. So we're basically going to have to identify which of these eight are going to be part of paramagnetic uh, molecular orbitals. And before we start, I'm just going to bring this more, more in the center because that was, that was killing me visually. <laughs> but anyway, let's get down to it. So we have to find out out of these eight, which one are going to be paramagnetic. Now remember, it. in terms of magnetic, there's two of them. There's paramagnetic and there's diamagnetic. Paramagnetic is just meaning that you just have to have at least one unpaired electron. I don't care if you have two unpaired, three unpaired, doesn't matter. Just as long as you have one unpaired electron, you are automatically going to be classified as paramagnetic. And remember, the unpaired electron is the lonely electron that just looks like this. So I don't want a pair. I want at least to see one unpaired. Now, these are specifically talking about diatomic molecules. So for all of these, I have to put two of them together. So I'm looking for, will Li2, will Be, uh, two work. Will B2 work? Will C2 work? You're getting the gist here. And as we get the answers, I'm just going to highlight them, but you'll, you'll see what's going on. F2 and then N2. Okay. Beautiful. So first off, why do I have two different drawings? Well, it depends on what uh, group you're in. For your first group, you are going to be using groups one through five. The other group is for six through eight. This is due to SP mixing, so your SP orbital mixing, a concept that is higher than general chemistry, but the idea here is that because of some overlap and some SP mixing, you get two different orbitals or orbital diagrams. So these five we'll be going to this diagram. So we'll highlight these and say, voila, we're going here. And these two di these three diagrams, so we have five going to one and three going to the other. Okay, so I guess we'll start with the five on this side. And once we start going, it'll be easy because then we can just increase as we go along. So the first one on the list is lithium, okay. So if we're doing our orbitals, remember the orbitals that are on the sides are your atomic orbitals. So I'll say atomic and atomic. The one in the middle is your molecular orbital, the one that has the two of them. So for this one, we're going to be doing two lithiums on the one side and the molecule Li2 in the middle. Let's see if it's paramagnetic. Now remember, lithium is in group one, so it has one valence electron. So I have to start at the lowest energy and work my way up. So since lithium only has one electron, I just put one here, and the same thing for the other lithium, one. And your molecular orbital has to be the total of what was in your two atomic orbitals. So one plus one is a total of two. So I need to have two in the middle, but you gotta start from the bottom and work your way up. So I have to put them in here. So I'll say one, two. Remember each line has a max of two electrons and I have to fill it before I go to the next one. 
And now, since we're only talking about the diatomic molecule, I'm only looking for this space right here. And was there any unpaired electrons in the molecule? No. There was unpaired electrons in just the lithiums, but as far as Li2 goes, I just have all paired. So Li2 would not be paramagnetic, it would be dimagnetic. So this one is out. Let's keep going. Be2. So let's just scratch out lithium and just put a Be. And since we're going from left to right, you're just increasing your valence electron by one. So instead of having one valence electron, you have two. So one, two, one, two. There's now a total of four here. So that means a total of four in the molecular orbital diagram. Here's the two already. So we'll say three. I have to finish this one out before I move to upward four. And then I say, was there any unpaired, right? Because we need at least one unpaired to be paramagnetic. Was there any unpaired? Absolutely not. So BE uh, doesn't cut the list as well. We move it on. And we're still on this diagram because we're doing groups one through five. So now boron comes. So boron has one more valence electron. So instead of two, it now has three. So I'm now starting in these P's. So I'll say one, right? And we'll do one over here. So that's a total of three. So the molecular orbital would have six valence electrons because three plus three is six. So here's two, four. Now we have to do five, but since these are the same energy equivalent, this is like kids on the school bus, right? If, if one kid goes on the bus and you don't know this kid, the other kid's going to sit by himself, right? You won't group these up before you go to the next one. So one, two, and that's a total of six. So now you look at this molecule and you say, is there at least one unpaired? And yes, there are. There's two of them. So... Maybe we'll put it on this side. We'll start a tally. Paramag, para, um, am I spelling this correctly? Nope, what happened there? There we go. Paramagnetic. So, paramagnetic, B2. So maybe I'll put a check here. And now we're moving on, C2. So, get rid of the Bs, we'll put the Cs. And we're adding one valence electron because carbon has four valence electrons. So here was the three. So kids on the school bus again, we're going to say four and four. So four plus four is a total of eight. We have six already. So two, four, six. Now I have to double back. Uh, seven, eight. And I look and I say paramagnetic or diamagnetic. It's di because there is no lone electron in the middle. So halfway there. And one is only paramagnetic. N2. That's five valence electrons. So we're just adding one more. So let's just skip these. So we got N, N2, and N. So five valence, five. So five plus five is a total of 10. So two, four, six, eight, nine, not to fill that one up, 10. I look at this, any unpaired, do we see any unpaired? Absolutely not. So sorry, didn't cut it. But now we're done with this drawing. Now we're moving on to the other drawing. So here we go, let's start with oxygen. Oxygens are going to be in the middle. And O2 is, uh, sorry, O's are going to be on the left and the right side, and O2 is going to be in the middle. We're picking up right where we left off. So oxygen would have one more valence electron than nitrogen, so that's a total of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, what? One, two, three, four, five, and six. And six plus six is 12. So I'll just start from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm moving up here, 11, 12. Kids on the school bus. So I look at this and I say, any unpaired? Absolutely, these two up top here. So O2 fits the bill. Now we have two paramagnetics. So this one is a check. Fluorine is next. So fluorine, maybe I'll just make this a little bit more in the center. Fluorine has one additional electron, making it seven. So that's seven and seven. So this was 12. Seven plus seven is 14. So I just have to add two more. 13, 14. So I look and I say, are these para or diamagnetic? It's, para, uh, it's diamagnetic, no unpairs. So fluorine didn't make the bill. Last one is neon. That has eight valence electrons. So we'll say any, any, and any. So that's eight. Whoa, that's eight and eight. So I just have to add the two more at the top. And I say to myself, do I have any unpaired? Absolutely not. So that doesn't fit the bill at all. And in this case, you only have two of them. So B2 is paramagnetic and O2 is paramagnetic. And that is the end. And I'm not going to actually draw the whole thing in because that would take even way more time. But I guess I'll give it a nice little border. That's beautiful. And there you go. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. Keep studying hard, and I will talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.